Hare Krishna everyone. In today's Bhagavad Gita as it is um, session we're going to look very briefly at chapter 10 verse 10 um, which goes Teisham satata yuktanam bhajatam priti purvakam dadami buddhi yogam tam yena mam upayantite the English translation to those who are constantly devoted to serving me with love I give the understanding by which they can come to me so um, briefly what Krishna is saying here in this verse is that um, he gives the understanding by which devotees can come to him provided that they are constantly devoted and they're serving him with love. So every devotee wants to um, break free from the shackles of birth and death. Every devotee wants to go back to the spiritual world to be with Krishna. Um, the spiritual world of Goloka Vrindavan, Vaikuntha Lok, where there is no death, where there is um, personal association with Krishna. So how to go there, all these instructions um, devotees get from um, the, the bona fide spiritual master, from um, the association <coughs> of devotees, that's how they cultivate Krishna consciousness. And they get the knowledge of how to attain Krishna. So, so buddhi yoga is what Krishna's describing here. When one tries to go home, back to Godhead, and take fully to Krishna consciousness in devotional service, his action is called buddhi yoga. So, um, the term buddhi means intelligence. And yoga means mystic activities or a mystic elevation. Um, so there are lots of temples where people can go to um, acquire knowledge from um, gurus, from bona fide acharyas, to uh, knowledge of how to um, surrender to Krishna and how to go back to Godhead. But if, even if a devotee does not take advantage of the vast um, literatures, vast um, reservoir of literatures that we have um, from different acharyas, or um, doesn't take instructions from the spiritual master, so even if a devotee doesn't do all of that, but if he is sincere in his devotional service, um, then Krishna himself within his heart will help that devotee. So even if the devotee is not intelligent enough to make progress by him by his own endeavors, um, so the devotee is maybe not, say, literate, may not know how to read the scriptures, or may maybe doesn't have the inspiration to read the scriptures or accept a guru, or even go to the temple. But if that devotee has the very important qualification there of serving Krishna with love, having love for Krishna, um, or if they're constantly devoted, so <coughs> they're constantly devoted to Krishna, it's not a one off thing, then a devotee is sincere and Krishna can see that. So the sincere devotee, therefore, who is engaged in Krishna consciousness with love, he cannot be without knowledge for long because Krishna takes it upon himself to enlighten that devotee, um, provide the understanding to that devotee so they can progress. The qualification is that a person should always engage himself in Krishna consciousness with love and devotion and render all kinds of services. 
Um, and uh, one thing to note is that Gyanis or impersonalists, people who practice karma yoga, they cannot get this buddhi from Krishna. One has to be having love, one has to be practicing bhakti yoga in order to get this enlightenment from Krishna. <coughs> Excuse me. So how to understand Krishna? So we should not speculate about what Krishna wants us to do. Um, we should not try to understand Krishna simply by arguing, so by arguments or speculation. And we should study the scriptures. And due to the contamination of material association for many, many millions of births, one's heart is always covered with the dust of materialism. However, when one engages in devotional service with love and constantly chants Hare Krishna, the dust quickly clears and one is elevated to the platform of pure knowledge. So all we need is love for Krishna and faith, and Krishna will then enlighten us. So here we have the, the instance of um, Uddhava. So here in, in this slide we're going to see how love is important. Loving devotion is so important to Krishna. It's more important than somebody who is well versed in all the in, in all the scriptures, very knowledgeable. Um, so superior to that is the person who has love for Krishna. So Uddhava, we remember Uddhava is the cousin of Krishna. Um, Uddhava was actually very, very, very intelligent and qualified. He had been taught by Brihaspati himself. Brihaspati is the um, teacher, a spiritual teacher of the demigods. So at that time Krishna was in Mathura. He was far away from Vrindavan and missing his mother and father and, go and the gopis. He wanted to send them a message. And he chose Uddhava, his close loving friend, his cousin. <coughs> he he wanted to send Uddhava not only because he wanted to deliver a message, but he he wanted Uddhava to learn something very important from the gopis and the other residents of Rindavan. He wanted Uddhava, who already had all the scholarly knowledge that he needed, he knew that Krishna was the Supreme Lord, he wanted Uddhava to see how to love Krishna to learn how to love Krishna to the highest degree. So it was actually Krishna's special favor to Uddhava to send him to Vrindavan to teach him highly elevated, ecstatic devotional service practiced by the gopis. So we understand that um, having prior knowledge is not that important to Krishna, but it's the, it's the love that is important. The gopis, why the gopis? The gopis, um, they are the um, most elevated of all devotees. No one can match their love for Krishna. So the gopis <coughs> were born not of any highly cultured family, but of cowherd men. And they hadn't been to school, they were just simple milkmaids. Yet they developed the highest love of Krishna which is um, which is what devotees aspire for. For self for self realization or God realization, there is no need to take birth in a high family of Brahmins. The only thing needed is development of ecstatic love of God. Um, so that's the that's the perfection of Krishna consciousness is that you don't have to be very intelligent, well versed in the scriptures, but you need to have love. And Krishna takes care of the rest. <coughs> <coughs> 
Right, so how does Krishna enlighten us? So we know that Krishna says he he will give the understanding. So how does he do it? So, um, so the pure devotee always has Krishna within his heart. And with the presence of Krishna, who is just like the sun, the darkness of ignorance is at once dissipated. The devotee cannot remain ignorant for long. So somewhere else um, in the Bhagavad Gita, so verse 10.11, Krishna says, To show them special mercy, I, dwelling in their hearts, destroy with the shining lamp of knowledge the darkness born of ignorance. Um, so how does Krishna do this? How does he, with his torch of knowledge, how does he um, destroy this darkness is from any way so he inspires us to search for a spiritual master because remember the spiritual master is his representative the spiritual master is the mercy representative of the Lord so um, we get inspired so we accept the spiritual master we read their books we take their instructions in this way, Krishna is helping us. He's helping to enlighten us. Um, he helps um, Krishna inspires us to associate with devotees, to hear um, spiritual discourses, hear his pastimes, his qualities. In this way, we make progress in Krishna consciousness and we automatically become knowledgeable. The devotees encourage us to carry out devotional activities with love, which attracts the mercy of Krishna. And we said that only devotees can get this enlightenment from Krishna because um, devotees have developed love for Krishna. <coughs> so here we have um, the story of how Nimai eats all offerings to Gopal from a visiting Brahmin. So there was um, a Brahmin who um, visited Jagannath Mishra's house. So in this past time, Krishna is showing us that he he chooses who to reveal himself to. And it will always be the devotee who has a lot of love for him. So this pastime is found in the Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. There was once a, a very saintly Brahmin who was um, who was traveling around. He was on pilgrimage, and he 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 had he used to worship Gopal by chanting the six syllable Gopal mantra, and he wouldn't even have um, he wouldn't eat anything without offering his poga to Gopal. And Gopal was hanging from his neck like a brilliant jewel. He had um, Gopal Shalagram Shila. One day he came to the home of Jagannath Mishra in Navadweep. Um, he was chanting Krishna Krishna with so much love, relishing the transcendental mellows of affection for Govinda. Uh, and his eyes were filled with tears. So Jagannath Mishra invited um, the guest to his house, invited the, the Brahmin to stay at his house. So he washed the feet of the Brahmin and um, um, and, and offered him a, a seat in all respect as, a, as an exalted guest. And so Jagannath Mishra said, especially today is the topmost fortune of mine um, because you you have come to our house and if you if you give me your order, may I make arrangements for your meal? The Brahmin said, whatever you desire, Mishra Ji. So um, Jagannath Mishra, in great ecstasy, collected the best of all materials, cleaned the kitchen thoroughly, and presented the Brahmin with all the supplies, all the best food stuff from his pantry. So the Brahmin became very happy. He cooked everything. And after that, he sat with his eyes closed in meditation to offer the bhoga to Sri Gopal. 
um, Krishna, he's Charlotte Rimshila. Um So, while he was doing that, he was offering um, the boga to, to his gopa, Nimai came on the scene crawling. <coughs> and Nimai's body was covered with dust. He was wearing no clothes at all. He laughed and he took a mouthful of the boga and put in his mouth. So the Brahmin's meditation was broken. He saw what happened and he cried, Hey, hey, this child has ruined my offering. So Sri Jagannath Mishra came quickly and he saw little Gora Sundar eating rice and smiling. He became very furious and he, um, Jagannath Mishra ran towards the child to beat him. But the Brahmin forbade him saying, Look, you're very intelligent. You know that to hit the child, it's not a good thing. Um, children, they they don't know um, between good and bad, so please don't hit this child. So Jagannath Mishra, he became nevertheless he was very dejected, and he sat down and he he was crying. He was so angry. So the Brahmin felt sorry, and he said, Jagannath Mishra, don't become dejected like this. You know, some days are like this. The Lord, he wants me to fast. He just. Maybe he wants me to take something simple today. I'll just have fruits. Um, sometimes I don't even have fruits. It's okay. So Lord Jag um, Jagannath Mishra said, No, please, please, if you consider me your servant, please once more cook in my kitchen. I'll supply you with everything. Um, this way my mind will become very peaceful. So the Brahmin said, Okay, all right, then. If your desire is that I cook again, I will. Hearing this, everyone became happy because they didn't want to offend the Brahmin. They didn't want him to fast in their house. They wanted him to eat. So they made all arrangements and um, everyone said to one another, this child Nimai is too restless. We have to restrain him and make sure he doesn't cause any more disturbances. So while the Brahmin was cooking, um, the um, people took... Nimai to another house and they kept him here um, all the all the ladies and the neighbors said oh what happened Nimai why did you eat the Brahmin's offering um, the Lord smiled his smile was as beautiful as the moon he, he said what fault is there in this the Brahmin himself called me to eat <coughs> um so they all said, oh, you rascal, Nimai, you ate his cooking. What? Why did you do that? And Nimai, he smiled innocently and he said, I'm just a cowherd, but I eat the food of Brahmins all the time. So obviously then the ladies didn't know, didn't understand what Nimai meant. They just laughed um, and they squeezed Nimai. They were... Um, just cut, um, you know, they, they were keeping my company. And during that time, the Brahmin, again, he finished cooking and he started to offer the boga to Gopal with his eyes closed, sitting in meditation. He began to meditate upon Gopal and his heart and um, somehow or other, Nimai escaped um, from the neighbours and he arrived on the scene and quickly he took a fist full of rice and put into his mouth. The sounds of his munching broke the Brahmin's meditation and he saw an Amai again. So the Brahmin again cried, hey, hey, she, Namai, the child is eating my food again, my offerings again. Um, of course, uh, Namai ran away and Chocolat Mishra came here and he, he, he tried to catch Namai. Um, so Jagannath Mishra was really angry and he said, oh, Child, if I catch you for what you've done today, I will beat you with a stick. I've lost all my patience and discrimination. Where is that great thief of a son of mine? Which house is he hiding in? So Namai was running after. Um, Jagannath Mishra was pursuing his son. Um, everyone began to say, oh, Chakanat Mishra, you ought to forgive such a minor offense. These children, they have no sense. How can you beat him? So, um, again, the Brahmin, he came 
to um, Jagannath Mishra and he pleaded, please, please, what is meant to happen will happen. It must just be my fate that today Krishna will not accept any bhoga offering. That's that's my problem. Please don't be de de dejected. So um, Jagannath Mishra was so, so miserable. But at this point, his son Vishvarup arrived. And everyone was very mesmerized by his beauty. The bra the pious Brahmin was struck with wonder and his eyes filled with tears. He said, Whose son are you? And everyone answered, He's the eldest son of Jagannath Mishra. So the Brahmin became so happy, he embraced Vishvarup. We know that Vishvarup is an expansion of um, Balaram. So um, Vishvarup then coaxed. Um, the Brahmin to cook again. Um, he, he he convinced the Brahmin that he, he should cook again, uh, much to the relief of Chukunat Mishra. So, um, so he asked, um, "Please don't take offense. Please cook something at all. At least just once more. Everyone will become so happy." He Vishwaru clutched the feet of the Brahmin and pleaded. So um, the Brahmin agreed then. He said, all right, I will cook again. And everyone was so happy. And this time everyone said to Chukunat Mishra, please, Mishra, lock your door from outside so that Nimai will not be able to get out. And Mishra said, good, I've already locked him up inside too. Um, and they even guarded the door of Chukunat Mishra. And the, the lady said, don't worry, Nimai has gone gone to sleep now. He will not be going out to eat anything tonight. So the Brahmin cooked and he offered his bhoga to Lord Gopal again. And he sat in meditation and he called out to Gopal to eat his food. And again, out of nowhere, Nimai appeared on the scene and started to eat the offering. And the Brahmin he opened his eyes and he started to cry in utter frustration again loudly but this time nobody heard him because they were all fast asleep <coughs> so then um nimai said oh brahmin you're very exalted what is my fault if i come as soon as you call me you're chanting you're, you're chanting my mantra. You're invoking my name. You're calling me to eat your, the offerings. How can I not come? Every time you're making your offering with such pure devotion. So every time I'm having to come to give you my darshan. At that time, um, the Brahmin had darshan of Lord Gauranga in a, in a beautiful Bala Gopal form. Um, yeah, actually, he manifested his eight-armed Baal Gopal form in four hands with a conch dish, disc, club and lotus. With two hands, he was playing the flute. In one hand, he was playing, he was holding a ball of butter and with the other, he was eating butter. On his breast were the Srivats and the Koshtaba jewel. Brilliant garlands of jewels hung from his neck. All his limbs were bedecked with beautiful ornaments and jewels. And on his head was an ornament of gunja beads and a peacock feather. The lips of his moon-like mouth were enchanting and he looked about here and there as he smiled. Um, and on all sides of the Lord there were cows, gopas and gopis so the brahmin saw vrindavan with all the birds and so krishna in this way um krishna gave his mercy to the visiting brahmin because he he had so much love um for for krishna um so the lord revealed himself to this brahmin so in in Navadweep, a lot of people had no idea that Namai was the supreme lord. They just thought he was just a, a mere child, but this Brahmin, he um, Namai revealed himself to him. Right. So let's look at another <coughs> another story here, where um, Krishna, in the form of Namai, 
um, showered his blessings on a Brahmin. So the story is the, that of an illiterate Brahmin who used to sit um, um, and read the, the Bhagavad Gita. At that time, Lord Chaitanya was traveling around and he saw every day that um, in the courtyard of the temple, a Brahmin was sitting and reading Bhagavad Gita. And he wasn't just reading it like most like like we read he was reading with so much emotion tears were rolling down his eyes as he flipped through the pages so Lord Chaitanya was really impressed by this um, the Brahmin was shivering and showing all signs of symptoms of extreme love for Krishna so Lord Chaitanya automatically got attracted to this and he came to the Brahmin and he asked my dear sir I see you're reading the Bhagavad Gita. What's your favorite chapter? So the Brahmin said, Oh, I am illiterate. I don't understand anything. I cannot read. I'm just reading this Bhagavad Gita because my spiritual master gave me the order to do so every day. Um, then Lord Chaitanya inquired, so, so what is it that is making you cry? Why are you crying? <coughs> So then um, the the Brahmin said, um, yes, I cannot, uh, I cannot understand the Bhagavad Gita, but when I look at the, at the cover and I look at the pictures and I see Arjuna, I see Krishna on Arjuna's chariot, I can see him. I visualize him holding the reins in his lotus hands. I see his exquisite blackish form in my mind and my happiness is complete. While looking at the Bhagavad Gita, I'm so enchanted. I don't want to do anything else, he said. Lord Chaitanya marveled at the Brahmin's, the Brahmin's um, sincerity and said, Your understanding is perfect. You know the message of the Bhagavad Gita. <coughs> You've understood the essence of the Bhagavad Gita. He was so pleased. Lord Chaitanya embraced the Bra Brahmin who paid his obeisances um, at the Lord's lotus feet. He cried tears of joy. The Lord lifted him up and the Brahmin told the Lord his profound realization. Because you have embraced me, my happiness has doubled. You have affected me to the core of my heart. I think you are a golden form of Lord Krishna, the Brahmin said. And Lord Chaitanya confirmed that he was indeed the personality of Godhead, Lord Krishna. But so, because of the Brahmin's firm faith and complete surrender to his guru, the Lord in, in the heart had given the Brahmin knowledge of Lord Chaitanya's true identity. Lord Chaitanya was playing the part of a devotee. Uh, not a lot of people knew this and they just thought he was um, just a, 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 an ordinary person. Nobody knew he was a supreme lord but this Brahmin, he got the mercy of the Lord and the Lord um, gave him all knowledge. Do not tell anyone that I am the supreme personality of Godhead, he said. Um, so while the Lord remained at the home of Venkata Bhatta at that time, the Brahmin visited him every day. He became fully devoted to the Lord. Um, so we can see, therefore, um, that we don't have to be very well-versed scholarly. If we, if we have love for Krishna, he will reveal himself to us. So this is the last slide um, in this presentation. Um, um, in this day and age, Lord Chaitanya has given us a simple formula. He's told us to chant the holy names of the Lord. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. And all we need is to chant and associate with devotees and the Lord will be very pleased with us and reveal to us this understanding by which we can attain him. Um, so thank you for your attention. If you like my video, put a like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you. Hare Krishna.